Hello, everybody. We're going to pick up where we sort of left off and we're going to build the next app in unit four, which is the chat bot. And this is kind of a revisit of something that we did earlier uh, in the course. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to improve the app significantly and make it um, both look better and behave better and add a few things to it. Um, I'm hoping this one goes pretty quick, but you know, I always say that <laughs> they never do. Um, so it takes the time that it takes to complete and we will uh, proceed. But basically what we're gonna be sort of working with here is kind of that, that chat bot code that we first started in the playgrounds first as just kind of like a simple um, console app. And then we transported that logic into a GUI application, but it was really, really primitive, right? Like you could um, put in a question and hit the thing and it would respond with one of the standard uh, answers. And our goal here is just to make that better. Now, um, I don't mean to put this out like as a carrot in front of the, the cart or whatever, you know, for the donkey to try to catch. But when I was doing my, my, I'll call it retraining this past summer to refresh my skills to get ready to teach this, one of our uh, fellow students in the class, you know, he's also a, you know, a college instructor and whatever. So it's pretty, you know, pretty code savvy. Uh, happened to have um, a paid version of chat GPT and use their API key to actually feed the chat bot directly to their API and get a response from chat GPT through the chat bot. So it, it wasn't that hard to do. He actually did it with just a few lines of code, you know, so if you have a, I'll just put it out there. If you have a paid account, you know, uh, with chat GPT, they allow you to use the API externally so you can feed uh, questions in from other applications. Uh, so something you might want to consider, but we're going to use kind of our standard code approaches uh, to do this work. Um, we're going to uh, spend a little bit of time. Apparently, this will only take us 45 minutes, it says here. We'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get uh, Xcode kind of ready to roll here. Um, but let's take a look at what they're kind of intending to do before we do that. So it says... Um, Think of a question that has a finite number of responses like, uh, in what month were you born, right? And how would you write code for that? And then write the code that will respond to the user's input with some interesting information and put the code into the chat bot as they did in the question answer exercise, right? Um, oops, and oops, sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, too many screens here, back this way. All right. and. It says, uh, okay, in the main storyboard, we're going to actually put in a little thing that says, hello, human, I'm a question bot, ask me a question. We're going to change that to a new question. For example, changing label next to welcome intercontinental zoo, what animal would you like to see? Um, and if the students like, they can change the emoji robot head to another one. So we'll learn how to do that. Um, yeah, and then for example, like if we have certain animals that people are going to ask about, we're going to be pulling it from a list of animals so that, you know, if they ask about one that's not in the list, it'll respond in kind, you know, so we're going to learn how to kind of do all those things here. All right, so um, we are going to, you know, do all this standard stuff. Um, and let's get started on doing the build here. So I'm going to pull that back over the other screen. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go back. So if you have Xcode up and running, um, get that onto the forefront of your screen here. We're going to actually go back to the app that we had already built here. And I want to be careful that I'm launching the correct one. You guys might have it in your quick list. You might not. Um, but I'm going to play it safe. And instead of launching it from inside of Xcode, I'm going to go to my documents folder where I'm trying to keep all the different versions separate. Unfortunately, on this machine, I've only run through this material once. But when on my other Mac, I've run through it multiple times. So I have all these different versions and I'm not sure which one is which. So that, I'm pretty thankful that I'm on, on this one here. Um, so we're in Swift. 
Uh, I'm gonna pull up the student folder and I think we did the, God, did we do the question bot? Yeah, in, in unit two. And I'm looking for that Xcode project, right? So I don't know how you guys have your stuff organized, um, but mine's organized like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. And if you guys remember, we have this, this code, right? Um, so there comes all the, uh, the stuff here. So we have uh, a, a few different uh, pieces of code in here, but generally speaking, we're, um, you know, have this complicated series of else ifs, right? And if you guys remember all the work that we put into just kind of creating this and whatever, and um, yes, I have very non-standard uh, answers in here and that's okay. You can put in whatever you want. That's kind of the point of this. Um, and I want to follow what they're saying here in the book. So they're, they're wanting us to explore the project navigator. So it says, make sure you can see the project navigator. And I'm pretty sure this is the project navigator if you hover here, right? Um, if you're not seeing that, just keep in mind that you can trigger that. Another way to bring it back up, of course, is you can come up here and just force it to appear. Right. Also notice that there's a bunch of other, you know, tools in here too, um, none of which are active at the moment, but the project navigator uh, certainly is right there. All right. Now, the other um, thing that we had going on here is that we did have a, a storyboard going on. And this is what we had. So this is what I did. You know, maybe yours is like a little robot head. I used the dinosaur, right? So I kind of already kind of broke one of the rules and, and used whatever icon I wanted. Um, but we have basically, uh, so the, one of the, the points of this little part of this exercise is to kind of explore the interface a little bit more than we have. And so we have all these components that are up on the screen. And the way that we um, kind of interface with all of them, right? And so like you can click on them and you can see all the properties in the sidebar. Uh, when we have the, uh, this main storyboard, this is where we do most of our graphical work. Uh, what's interesting though, um, is there is this other launch screen. So like this is the kind of screen, for example, if you load up an app and it's got a screen that loads up first before the app shows up, this is where you would put it, right? So that that's what that's for. Um, this right now is empty, so it's really not doing anything. And that's not actually true. It actually is doing something. Like when you load your app, you notice the screen goes white first and then the app loads, right? So the kind of the point is you could put on the screen whatever you want to kind of introduce your app, right? So that, that's kind of a interesting uh, part about it. But back on the, on the main storyboard here, we do have all these other components and, and really kind of the point of this is to recognize the fact that if you're working on a component here, it's got a place over here in the, the hierarchy that you can find the object. So if you're not able, to click on something directly because, for example, you made it hidden on the screen. That happens like you create something and you hide it and then you turn it on later. Uh, you can still activate it from here, right? So you can get to any of these properties and anything that's got like a, a kind of like these expanders, you know, allows you to really dig into the properties of the objects. And th this is not in any way, shape or form like a file explorer, it's a component ex explorer, if you will. So we're looking at, at the individual little pieces of each one of the objects. And in many cases, their properties, like the ask button, right? You know, it's got constraints on it of some sort. And those are, you know, declared here in, in these sidebars, um, including things like, like height, for example, right? Um, some of this stuff happens kind of automatically, but some of it you can tweak and set and adjust. And, you know, this is basically how, how you find it. Right. Um, we do have some um, assets here, but not many. Um, 
actually none, but uh, <laughs> this is where they would go, right? If you, if you put them there. Uh, and then we have all the different code files here. And what we've you know, seen so far is that there's these couple like app delegate and scene delegate that typically we don't mess with these at all. These are system created things, but they are code files that are part of this that make a lot of the magic that we're doing with drag and drop and all that happen, right? Interestingly, if uh, you look at these files, like if you look at the scene delegate, for example, they have very verbose comments in here about what each one of these functions and methods does, right? And at least at this level that we're working at, there's no need to ever mess with this stuff. Then we have our, our view controller and the view controller, uh, we did have a couple of these little connections, right? That we did. And um, we had a little bit of code that we dropped in here and it was kind of a, a process to do all that. And then of course, we have this external file, which is the question answer where all the stuff was put in. And this is a structure once again, that we're using kind of as our data file to feed in to the program. Now, um, we know how the app operates because we've already used it before, but because you know uh, it's been a while, let's go ahead and hit the run button, get it up on screen, get it to propagate. So that's our launch screen apparently. And then there's the regular screen. Um, Currently I have to go north for lunch today um, because I asked the where question, right? So you test it to make sure that it works. You know, the, one of the things that we're doing once again is we're doing a build to make sure that our code's okay and running right and that it still operates. And, and really what would be wise, and I, I don't know, um, maybe I'll just type hello, all right. Type what's up. Yeah, I, apparently a three-year-old hopped up on sugar. Um, all right. All right. So first primitive is this is it's still kind of amusing and it and it does work, right? So we um Okay, so the message struct, right? So uh, I'm trying to read the instructions here, so I apologize, guys. All right, so basically we're gonna have, you know, a conversation with this little chat bot here, and it's gonna hold two types of messages, questions uh, asked by the user of the app and answers given by the brain of the app. So the message type, uh, enum holds the two possible values, question and answer, and you'll learn about enums later in this course, which we've already learned about, right? So we've learned about that. Um, and the message structure is going to hold the information needed to make the entry in the conversation, the date, the message text, and the type of message. To create the question, you use a message initializer like the one that they're showing here in the book. So I'm just going to pull this over here for a second. So I'm just kind of you know, following through this whole um, kind of thing here, All right? So what they're basically uh, saying, you know, is that we're going to build this code and we can use it anywhere in the app, basically. Um, the other aspect of this is we're going to build what we call uh, a conversation delegate structure, um, but it's basically going to run the whole app. That's kind of like the, you know, the controller for everything. Uh, and then we're also going to feed in a, a data source um, that's going to help us kind of run the, the whole conversation. And, and I'm not going to read any more of this. Let's let's get to kind of working on this. But let's look at this diagram really quick. So kind of the, the thinking is that the user's typing a message, right? It'll go to the view controller that'll go, okay, um, you know, what kind of message is this? Where is it gonna go? How should I handle it, right? And then that view controller will then either get us to our data source to kind of give a standard response or 
come up with some you know alternative and then we will ultimately output something and then the user should be able to see this and you know what would be nice is if it also kind of let us ask more questions right and okay so a lot, a lot of stuff is going to happen all right so the next part here is uh building and running the app and um and it makes a little point you know here if you check in the console in xcode you won't see any of the print statements yet that's because you've only launched the app and haven't triggered any events right but if you do run the app and mine is running and i don't know if we can see the console here i don't see any of those things in here but the, the point that they're making is as you're running the app you know that xcode will kind of track it in the console and i'm not just not seeing it here so whatever i'm not finding that it's showing it but maybe i'm just not in the right mode and that could be because we already kind of bypassed that i'm not really sure real frankly all right we'll figure that out as we go all right let's go back to the book for a second so and it says that's because you've only launched the app and haven't triggered any events so your conversation hasn't run entry question the app will think a bit and then go back looking just like it did before and then um check the console again entering a question generated an event which ran some code now are you guys seeing that in your console can i ask you that if you type in a question and ask it, is it popping up in your console? Uh, let me see. Yeah, and I, and I'm I I think I I know what what the answer to this is because I don't think that we're sending it. We're not doing any print commands in here. I think we removed them all. So I'm going to rerun the app myself. I'm, I, I'm really curious to see, to get that to trigger, you know. Um, yeah, I, I'm not getting anything. Yeah, neither was I. Yeah, and, and I think but that's because we removed. You're, yeah, you're right. There is no print commands in this. So. Yeah. yeah, right. Absolutely not. All right, so. Apparently we're well, we're well past that point. So, all right, let's see how these instructions will then. You know, <laughs> um, all right, so I th I think what's going to have to happen here is I'm going to actually close this. I think they might want us to use the new version of this. So I'm going to stop the app from running. I'm going to come up to file, and then um, close the project. And so instead of opening the project. And I kind of like the uh, let's view better for this. So instead of opening the project from unit two, we're going to open it up from unit four. So they have a starter version for us. All right, let, let's try doing this. So I'm going to open this and see if this is different. I'm going to trust in open. All right, I'm gonna make sure my navigator panel is listed here. We got our view controller. Okay, and this looks like, like more like the aftermath of the app than the beginning of the app. So you guys will have to Excuse me here as I kind of fumble a bit with this. And I mean, this seems, it seems like the right version to me. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just run it. I just wanna see how this is coming up on screen here. All right. Okay, and now I am seeing the console. So, so this is the point. They, they do have 
ask to add answer why hello there, right? Okay, so now we're working with the right version. All right, so I apologize for that. But um, kind of an interesting and different uh, little layout than the one that we had built before. And there's a, kind of a bunch of things going on here that they're, uh, it, to me, it seems like they're kind of skipping over and I'm not really sure how they're they're getting from point A to point B. The, the one aspect of this and, you know, I like doing this all in full disclosure mode. I'm, I'm taking a little off guard here with this real frankly is, okay, so the app's running, I am gonna terminate it. So let's just terminate it. So now it is behaving the way that they're, that they're indicating. And I'm just gonna, you know, collapse that console down. But I want you guys to notice here that we have a little bit more going on here than, than we have before. And what I'm concerned with is that they have the navigation controller in place then we haven't built it, right? So that's why I'm concerned that do we have a, a finished version of this or do we have a version in progress? So here's what I'd like to do. If we could take a pause and then uh, have a quick little break and then I'll review the status of it and make sure we're in the right place and using the right version. Um, so we'll come back in five minutes. We'll take a quick pause here. All right. All right, so we took a little bit of time here to try to figure out exactly what Apple is intending us to do here, right? And and what they're basically doing is they are having us uh, take a pre-built version of the app, and then we're gonna build upon what they've already built. It has some of the features that we did before, but it's a little bit more sophisticated and complicated than what we had before. Um, their structure for this, and, and I think this is a little you know important to, to note is they're using what we call the model view controller approach. So you see model, Apple calls it UI, the view, and then the controllers. And it really is kind of a way to split up code into what we call a separation of concerns where the models are the structure for the information. Uh, the user interface is the stuff you see. And then the controllers are what directs all the code to do what it does, right? Uh, and kind of, you know, I think of it as kind of like the captain of the ship, so to speak, you know, but where should I go, captain? Go over there, you know, uh, and then do your thing. All right. The first task they want us to uh, adjust is let the message count equal one. So they want us to come into this um, model area, find the conversation data source and change the message count to one. And now they're saying build and run again. So let's go ahead and, and do that. I'm not really sure what the point of that is, but I guess we're going to find out in a second here. So let's go to the next page and find out. Oh. Did yours run? Mine, mine's not running here. Yeah, mine ran. Okay, there it is. All right. All right. All right. So it says you can see a single message in the conversation and check in the console and you'll see this message. And I can see it at the bottom, asking for me message in index zero. So if you ask a question, you'll see that nothing changes, but you'll still see the console messages about adding the question and answer messages. And now the data source capabilities look like this. All right, so let's just, my standard looks up. And the point is, keep your eye on the console down here so you can see sort of what's happening and you can see what is uh, going on in the background, right? Right. And so it says, how many messages are there? One, right? That, that's what the book is saying. Add this question to the conversation and I'll, I'll print to the console, but I'm not doing anything else. And then if I ask again, so And you can see that it kind of keeps track of it in, in the console is kind of the point. Um, 
and and really what they're basically looking for is you know the the message and its index value and where it sits in sort of the stream of it all and it and what it's saying here is what should really happen is that each time a message is added to the conversation the data source should update the number of messages so it can give the correct answer the ne next time it's asked so so change the definition of message count property to a variable instead of a let and set the initial value back to zero. So let's do that. All right, so you wanna stop the app from running now to do that because then we're, we're gonna to try to update it. So we're gonna say method, message count is now a variable and we're gonna reset it to zero. All right. Um, okay, and then it says here inside the add question and add answer methods, which are both on the same uh, code file here. Um, we want to, after the print statement, add the following line, message count plus equals one. So we're going to do message count plus equals one. And you can just copy paste that if you wish. And so now we're incrementing that. And it wouldn't increment before, no matter how many we were asking, because it's set to zero and it was a constant, right? All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and run this again. So here it is. And I'm just gonna type, hello. All right. So the hello world happens anyhow. Uh, but it, that's the response to typing hello. And then if I type what is up. Oh. All right. Not a very good chatbot <laughs> so far, right? Well, hello, you already said that. Um, what's up? Hello. What's up? Hello. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like talking <laughs> to <you> well. <laughs> um, but more importantly, take a look at the console. Now we're keeping track of these messages, but you're also noticing on the screen how it's tracking the conversation, right? It, it's like keeping a, a track of the output, um, which is helpful, I think, right? So if you think about like how chats work, I mean, that, that's pretty normal is you type a message and you can see what you typed and you can see what the other person typed and you can scroll back and look at things, right? Make, makes total sense, right? Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to use these indexes in our to our advantage to basically help build those capabilities um and so in we're moving on to part four already and it says you know the app allows you to ask a question then it thinks then it gives you an answer and we get that dot 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 for the thinking effect uh you're not allowed to ask another question while it's thinking since your numbering starts at zero you can assume that each even numbered message is a question and each odd number message is an answer. Hmm, okay, that's an interesting thought, okay. Um, and I don't know if you guys are uh, looking at kind of the, the messages here and, you know, like, you know, ask to ask a question, hello, and then asking for message, you know, and you know, see kind of like the whole stream there. Um, all right. So since your numbering starts at zero, you can assume that each even numbered is is a conversation and each odd number is an answer. And that's only because there's kind of like this back and forth going on. To show this in the app, remove the return line from the message at index and replace it with this. So there's some sample code here. Um, And what they want us to do is basically remove this line. So I'm, I'm just going to comment it out. And now we're going to add this code. So we say if index mod two. So this is the even odd thing right here, if you guys remember. We have an even numbered index. We are going to return the 
message and we'll use this format, the date text type, right? In the date field, we'll use the date function. This pulls the live date from the system. Date with parentheses, capital D. In the text area, we're gonna type this. We're gonna put in the question. This is text. And then we're gonna string interpolate here and we're gonna put in um, index divided by two. And then the message type will be dot question. There is an else to this if. Oh yeah, and see I, I um, okay, so they're, they're telling us that we're missing a return statement because I haven't given it an else yet. So there's no guarantee it would work basically. So I'm adding an else and now I'm gonna put in another return statement, uh, same format. So a message, date type text, or actually date text type. <laughs> so once again, we'll use the date thing. And then the string will be same thing as the one above, but it's just gonna be an answer instead of a question. And then the other one was question. This one is answer as a type. You guys good? Yep. Got it all typed in? Yep. All right, so now we're gonna build and run again. Uh, if it's still running, hit stop. Um, let's go ahead and run and bring it up. Um, and the screen is going to start looking a little bit different now. So watch what happens. Watch the console too. So I'm going to type hello. Okay. Notice what it did. It added a timestamp. So it just reads it right from the system. And this is really helpful, right? Like when you look at like a traditional text messaging or chatting app, I mean, that's really common. So when did this happen? Oh, today, 1221. All right. Um, however, right, the stuff that it's putting in there, question zero, answer zero, that's very nice, right? It tells us what position it is in the array. And if I type in, you know, whatever, um, thinking about it, and it's just always gonna type in question one, answer one, that, that's nice. That means it's accepting it. It is reading it down here. You guys noticing in the console, it is reading in uh, the stuff and giving me an answer. But um, this is kind of neat, this, this kind of back and forth, left and right kind of, you know, traditional chat bot kind of thing. Um, all right, so regardless of how that works, we need to kind of ramp this up, obviously. Now, we're moving on to part five in the chapters, and this part's called adding storage. And what they're saying here is the conversation data source needs a way to store the questions that the user has entered and the answers given by the brain the storage has to be able to do the following things, store as many messages as required, whatever that means, keep the messages in a specific order, okay, makes sense, give back the message at a specific index, right? And so we've already learned about some structures that can kind of do this, right? And um, so we're gonna actually add an array of messages this, that kind of makes sense. So, um, we're going to keep working here in the conversation data source file, by the way, right? Um, so up here at the top, we're going to set up a, a var called images, and that's going to equal an array. So there's my square brackets and of type message and then you have to put the parentheses after it which is the constructor piece right so that's the part that constructs the array right so we have an array of messages uh, of type message right 
that's what's going on here. Now, if you're wondering, this is built somewhere else, you know, so if you, are you noticing that this is called message and then there's like a model over here called message. So this is the structure of message, right? So it's enumerated as two different types, question or answer, and then the structure of each message. And this is actually what we're building is an array of these. So each array position will hold a date, a string, and the type of message, question or answer, right? And that's all gonna be stored. All right, so let's go back here then. Um, now we've created that array and it's time to add some code to the, let's see, we're gonna add this to which the question, the add question function. So up here, we're gonna add the following code. So now that we've, done this let's just add a little code here at the bottom we're going to create a constant called message a singular message by the way that's going to feed into message which is a, a structure right so we can just read in its its standard structure here once again we're going to put in the system date as it's currently happening um, the text is going to be of type question and the type and i said that backwards right the text is going to say question and the type is going to be question all right and then once you've done that so you've like set these you know values for that object now we're going to append it back to the array so we're going to say messages plural which is the array and then we are going to uh append and what are we going to append the message now we're going to do the same thing to add answer down here and you can basically use the same exact code the only difference is you're going to change the question pieces to answers so you could copy these two lines and just drop them in right here. Then come in here and type this call it answer. Oops. Answer. The append message is the same, but either way, whether you're asking a question or an answer, it's all gonna be stored in the array and then can be retrieved. That, that's really kind of the important time. So now basically what we've done is every time the data source is asked to add a question or answer, it will create a new message and add it to the array. The other thing it wants us to do is remove the conditional statement lines after the print statement in message add. So in other words, they want us to remove the code that we just added, right? This was really put in to temporarily put stuff up on the screen. Um, and then we wanna replace it. We do need a re return statement here. And what we're gonna return. And I, I, and I suppose at this point, okay, I'm gonna control Z that. You know, another, I guess, approach is you could just comment all this stuff out if you wanna keep it there for reference or whatever. Um, and then ultimately what we're doing here is we are gonna return messages in a particular index position. Which index position? It, well, it depends on the one we send into it. So this function receives an integer and whichever one we're asked for, that's the one that it will pull back. All right, so not a lot of code changes here. If you're still running the app, hit stop. Let's hit the run button again pull it up on the screen. And now let's just do kind of due diligence here and talk to the chat bot saying hello. And it's responding. And um, what is for dinner? See what it responds with, that really depends. Um, but you'll notice that it actually is putting our messages up on the screen and we can just keep going. Why am I here? Hopefully to learn, I think so. Oh, okay, uh, it's your deal. Uh, 
Thanks, thanks, chatbot. That was very nice of you. All right. So it should really uh, be kind of operating a lot more like a traditional chat at this point. And uh, I really do think that the little timestamps are cool and um, really easy to add those, by the way, as you can see. But now we're also getting the actual things that were typed on the screen and the responses and all of it is stored on top of it all, right? And um and kind of the, the interesting part of this is by by basically getting all that information grouped together uh, in a conversation history, we've kind of created what we call an abstraction that hides the details from the rest of the app. So like it, the, the rest of the app doesn't care how this is stored, but it's stored, you know, and then we can utilize that. Um, and because it's kind of obscured from the rest of the app, we just kind of operate as if it's just there and it works and then we just utilize it, right? All right, so now we're gonna move on to, to part six. It says there's no longer any need for a separate message count since you can just tell uh, the count property of array to figure out how many messages there are, right? So we kept track of them before so we could figure out index values, um, but now we don't need that, right? So let's change how we're going to do this. Um, so it says, in fact, storing redundant information can be the source of bugs if you make changes in one place but forget to make them somewhere else. We want to delete uh, the lines from uh, add question and add answer where you increase the me message count. So we want to do that so we can remove these. So I'm just, I'm just going to comment about, you can just strike them all together if you wish, right? That can just go away. All right, then we're gonna change method message count to basically what we call a computed property. So we're gonna get rid of the equals zero. And what we're gonna do here is instead, we're gonna put in the, the colon call it an integer and then curly brackets. I don't know if you guys remember this, right? But this is a computed property we're calling upon count, which is built into all arrays, right? So it's just gonna look at the array, count it and give us a value, right? So um, we don't have to manually increment the value every time we answer a question or add, ask an answer or whatever. Um, that's just going to be intrinsic because of it's getting stored and we can just count the structure in the array and we have the, the count, right? It's still a variable, but instead of being populated mechanically through program code, it is reaching into the data structure of the array, counting it and giving you the answer and it's dynamic, right? So it can still kind of change. All right, so in addition to the ask question prompt, it's nice for the app to welcome the user and ask them to get started. To add a welcome message, find the line where the message array is initialized and replace it with this, uh, which I'm about to type. So where is it initialized? Right, at, right up here, variable messages. So here's the array. And then inside the square bracket, We're going to just type opening line, and then we are going to remove the constructor from it. And so basically what this does is it creates an array that has a single message in it rather than an empty array of messages, if you kind of see what I mean. So it's like taking that opening line that it's saying, hi, I'm a chatbot, let's talk. And then it's just dropping it right into the array. So now we have one thing in the array already in position zero, right? And because this is a computed property now, um, and I, you see how this is flagging red? Here's the problem with that. It should have been plural because we're talking about the array, right? So that's my fault, right? Mistype, but thank you debugger for finding it for me before I try to run the code. Um, all right, so now this becomes a lot more dynamic, 
it starts, it puts something in the array, it automatically keeps count. Beautiful, right? We don't have to manually keep count anymore. All right, moving on to the next page here. All right. So it says for the last step, improve the chatbot's brain from the project navigator open conversation delegate. So we're going to go over to this file here um, and change the logic of the response to question string uh, implementation to return your own answers to the user's queries. So here's where we can pull back our old code and and drop it in. So if, and I'll, I'm gonna say that that's kind of optional, but you know, we did put a lot of time into creating that, you know, that's kind of the flip side of it. So maybe it's not a bad idea to try to figure out a way uh, to pull that back. So here's, here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to um, not the unit four version, but I'm gonna go back to the unit two version. So if you guys see how I'm like finding this in my file system, so I'm mm -hmm. going to get two version of the question bot, we called it then. And I'm going to open up the hierarchy and you can see how we can um, look at these files. Now, I don't want to necessarily open these up inside, by the way, inside of uh, Xcode right now. I could, um, but I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to open them up with some other sort of text editor. I do have Visual Studio Code on here. Um, if text edit is your only option, well, I guess that's your only option, but a plain text editor is really preferred. So let's just go ahead and open that up. I'm going to let it launch here. And the whole point is, um, um I'm going to open it and then that way we can, all right, all these permissions, Right, we can take all this logic that we built <laughs> and drop it in there. And now you gotta be really careful about how you do this. So let's take a look at Xcode before we copy and paste. And uh, let's see, like, do we have a correlation here about how the, the code is structured? And it seems like I do. So it looks like I can probably just grab my whole function, right? Called response to just like this one with a question string all of it looks the same let lower question yeah it all looks right to me so we can just grab this whole function and make sure you get the right curly bracket at the bottom and copy that from here and then grab this whole function and replace it all right then hopefully as you copy paste you got all your curly brackets. You put stuff in the right place. Um, you were good about naming it exactly like you were supposed to, and now you have your own <laughs> answers uh, to the chat bot. And of course, you could always expand on this or do whatever you want. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, stop the current running build, and let's hit run again. Here it comes. All right, so there's your opening message. Now we're gonna say hello. All right, uh, why am I here? All right. So these, an my answers are much better than the pre-built ones. What is for dinner? A three-year-old hopped up on sugar. That doesn't sound delicious to me. Uh, so I got a why, a what. How do I do this? All right. Um, who is doing this? All right. Um, so I got a, a why, a what, a how, a who. What am I missing? Aware. The north, of course. That's an answer that should probably be uh, changed. Uh, 
you know, I could think of much better ways to say that. Um, and if they ask something, it doesn't start with why, what, how, who, or where, like, is this cool? Then it hits the bottom else statement, you know, and it's a little bit randomized, right? Well, it depends on, uh, you know, is it not cool? It should randomize this, right? Ask me again tomorrow. All right. Um, do we have a thing for when? We don't have a when one. We could add a when one, All right? When? All right. So actually, kind of, the when one actually worked pretty well, right? So if you guys can think of other things you can drop in here, you totally can do that, right? And you can get really, really kind of sophisticated and snarky with it. Um, and then you could even expand it. Like if you're thinking about making like just a fun chat bot kind of to simulate AI, you could have it, for example, uh, these are all checking prefixes, like what would, you know, like what word we're starting with, but you could also search for very specific strings. So if somebody says Green Bay Packers, you could, you could respond, go pack, go, <laughs> you know, uh, regardless of what the question is, you know, goofy stuff like that. You can totally ramp this up and have fun with it. Um, all right, folks, that is the build uh, for this, I think. I don't think there's any more steps. So we're going to stop right here. Stop the app from running. And let me just ask both of you, you guys okay? Did it work? Yeah, it yeah. worked for me. Excellent. It worked for me as well. All right. So this recording is going to end here. That was our, our chat bot.